Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to a bit of an investigation. Now over here in the UK some crazy new electricity prices have been announced and they mean that we might be paying up to 52 pence per kilowatt hour for our electricity pretty soon. Now realistically that might not happen because of price caps and other factors, they might decide to change the policies, but whichever way you look at it we are going to be seeing a massive increase in our electricity prices. So today I've decided I want to ask the question, what is it actually costing us in terms of electricity to take part in the hobby of model railways? Now, in theory, you can calculate the amount of power that any device consumes by taking the voltage in volts and the current in amps and multiplying those together, and that gives us the power consumption in watts. For example, let's take this 12 volt locomotive, which draws around 150 milliamps, that's 0.15 amps. Let's multiply those two together to get the power consumption, which is 1.8 watts. Now, if we take that figure of 52 pence per kilowatt hour, that means that this locomotive costs 0.09 pence per hour to run. And that doesn't sound so bad really, does it? Less than one tenth of one pence to run a loco for one hour. Well, if that was the case, then sure, we would not have to worry about this at all. But the thing is that devices are not necessarily that efficient. There is a controller involved in this situation, which is not 100% efficient, and that too is going to be consuming some power. So rather than just focusing on what the locomotive itself is consuming, we really need to measure what is actually being drawn from the mains, from the wall. So to help me do that, I have purchased this. And this is called an electricity usage monitor, and this is gonna help me figure out what exactly it costs us to partake in this hobby. So let's take another look at what it costs to run a locomotive. First of all, I've plugged this thing into the controller without any trains running. All of the dials are turned down to zero, and you can see that the power consumption is seven watts already. And per hour, that would cost you 0.3 pence. So it's not a lot of money, but it's still three times what we expected a locomotive to actually draw, even though we're not running anything. So it's definitely worth doing this, I think. Right, so let's turn one of the controls up to 50% power then. Let's run one of the locomotives. And as you can see, that has added five watts to our total, bringing us up to 12, and that would cost us 0.6 pence per hour. So whereas we calculated a locomotive should be drawing about 1.8 watt, in reality, it's drawing more like five because of those inefficiencies. So again, well worth doing this. Right, let's move on. Let's add a second locomotive into the mix. This one's actually got a load as well. It's got some coaches. And again, we can see the total increase by 5 watts, and we are now running at 17 watts, which is nearly 1 pence per hour, 0 0.9 pence. So let's add a third locomotive. I think this is a fairly typical number of locos for someone to run. And this time it's only jumped by 4 watts, so maybe this is a more efficient loco. So the total is now 21 watts, and in terms of the cost, that will be around 1.1 pence per hour. So that is to give you a very rough idea of what it will cost to run three locos. I'm using a Gage Master analog controller here. Obviously, different controllers are going to draw different amounts of power. DCC controllers, again, could be a little bit different, but I wouldn't expect any controller to be vastly different in the amount of current it draws. I would imagine that most of them are gonna be around that ballpark, so you can use that figure if you will. So now we've got a pretty good idea of what the actual trains will use in terms of electricity. But obviously there's a lot more to our hobby than that. We don't just sit around all day watching our trains running in the dark. There are all kinds of tools and lights and accessories that we use that also use electricity. So let's start looking at some of that and let's try and get a better idea of what this hobby is actually costing us. So on my layout, at least, I've got a number of LEDs inside my buildings, which just make it a little bit more realistic. And most people do. Most people have little bits of accessories here and there, which enhance their layouts. 
Now my accessories are driven by a separate power supply from my controller and plugging that in we can see the LEDs and the power supply itself are using just 2 watts so that's 0.1 pence per hour and that's pretty good it's almost negligible I would say that is. But like I say, I don't just sit in the dark when I'm running trains. The backs of the beams here in the loft actually have LED tape on them. And that's what I use to illuminate my layout. And I know a lot of other people use that as well. So in total, I've got five meters of LED tape, which has been cut up into 50 centimeter strips across 10 of my beams. Plugging the power supply for those lights into my electricity usage monitor shows that the consumption here is 63 watts or 3.3 pence per hour on the electricity bill. So now we're starting to see some significant figures. Lighting is costing us way, way more than any locomotives are. But of course, that's not it in terms of lighting. Most of us don't just have layout lighting in the rooms. For instance, I've got these lights above me. I've got more LED tape. In fact, I've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 meters of LED tape which light this room. And these lights and the power supply that drives them is drawing 137 watts, which costs around 7.12 pence per hour, which is a little bit strange because obviously that's not that far off the 5 meters of LEDs that are on the beams. Well, the reason is these runs of LEDs on the roof are quite long. Now, I am powering them from both ends, but the conductors within the tape are quite thin. And so as you get further away from the power supply, there are losses and increases in resistance. So even though there's a lot more LEDs on my roof, they're not drawing proportionally more power. So that's quite handy, I suppose. Still though, 7.12 pence per hour, that's quite significant compared with the locomotives and such. That is just my lighting though, and of course a lot of people like you will use different sorts of lighting. So a 100 watt incandescent light bulb like this one will actually cost you 5.2 pence per hour to run, which is more than two thirds of what all of these LEDs use. And believe me, if I was using these 100 watt bulbs to light this room this well for filming, I would need four or five of these at the very least. So incandescent bulbs like this one, they are certainly not very efficient. In rooms downstairs where I use bulbs like this, I've actually replaced them all with bulbs like this. So this is an LED equivalent. It puts out the same amount of light as a 100 watt bulb, and yet this one uses just 17 watts, which costs me 0.9 pence per hour. So if you haven't already changed to LED bulbs, now would definitely be the time to do it. However, if you are going to use high output LEDs like this, 100 watt equivalents, it's definitely worth investing in good quality ones because while LEDs do last forever, in inverted commas, provided they're not being driven too hard, of course, the circuitry that runs them often does not last as long because these high power LEDs generate quite a lot of heat and that constant heating and cooling does take its toll on the circuitry and they can fail. So it is worth investing in decent LED brands. However, this one made its money back within about one year. And of course, given the recent increases in electricity, if you haven't already changed to LEDs, it would be a good time to start now because that will save you a lot of money. So now let's start talking about some tools that we as modelers tend to use. The first one I'm going to cover is the soldering iron. And a lot of us use soldering irons for electrics and assembling kits. It's quite an essential modeling tool. Now it's a little bit complicated to answer the question, what does a soldering iron cost to run? Because the power they consume is not always constant. For instance, when I switch mine on, it draws over 100 watt, 108 watt. And then as the tip heats up, it drops down to around 60 watt. However, then when it reaches maximum temperature, it actually shuts off completely and draws almost nothing until the temperature drops again and then it turns back on. And I did some timings on this. The soldering iron switches itself on for around five seconds and then it's off again for eight seconds. And that's what it does. It just switches itself on and off, on and off. That's how it maintains temperature. So it's actually only switched on around 38% of the time. And when it had settled down at its top temperature, it was only drawing around 60 watts approximately. So on average, the power consumption is about 23 watts, and that would cost around 1.2 pence per hour to run. 
Obviously though, different soldering irons are going to consume different amounts of energy, so bear that in mind, but that's a rough figure for you. Another tool that modelers use these days would be the 3D printer. And a little bit like the soldering iron, it's quite difficult to answer what these draw as well. When the printer is switched on and not doing anything, it uses 10 watts. So that's actually quite a lot to say it's just dormant. However, when I start a print job and the heated bed and the nozzle start to warm up, the power consumption shoots right up to 320 watts. Now obviously that would be incredibly expensive to run, but a little bit like the soldering iron, a 3D printer doesn't consume that much power normally. Once the nozzle and the heated bed reach the optimum temperature, the 3D printer will switch off its heaters until it needs to turn them on again, and we can see that on the monitor. So when it's running normally, it's drawing around 35 watts, and then around a quarter of the time that consumption shoots up to 260 watts. So on average, that 3D printer used 91 watts, which would cost around 4.7 pence per hour. Again, different 3D printers are gonna have different values, but that's a rough estimate for you. Let's look at a rotary tool then. Now, lots of modelers use these for cutting and polishing things. Mine, without a load, used 53 watts, but then under a little bit of resistance, the power consumption shot up to around 60 watts. The average was about 57, and that would cost you three pence per hour, which seems like a lot, but of course you don't tend to use these for hours at a time. It's normally just for a few seconds. So again, the usage here is gonna be largely negligible. Another tool that modelers tend to use would be the glue gun, and these are handy for sticking scenery together, any sort of job like that really. Now, a little bit like the soldering iron, when I first turned on my glue gun, the power consumption was alarmingly high. 160 watt, in fact, which is a little bit naughty because the sticker on the glue gun reads just 100 watt. <laughs> this is nearly double that. But like the soldering iron, this dropped slowly to around 52 watt, and then it did the on and off thing to maintain its temperature. This time though, it was off for 17 seconds at a time, approximately, and only switched on for around seven seconds. So the average consumption for my glue gun would be 18 watts, and that would cost 0.9 pence per hour. Now, bear in mind, when I did this test, I wasn't squirting glue out of the glue gun, which would cause the temperature in the glue gun to drop and prompt it to turn on its heating element and maintain temperature. So if you're actually using the glue gun, it would cost you a little bit more, but again, this is just a rough estimate. So far, we have covered most of the sources of power consumption for a railway modeler. But in many cases, we've been talking fractions of pence for each, which is not very useful when you're trying to think what this hobby is actually costing you. So let's turn this into a real life scenario now. Let's figure out what this hobby is going to cost an average modeler within the space of a week. Now, obviously, in order to do this, we are gonna to have to make some assumptions. In this imaginary scenario, I'm going to say that our modeler is active for two hours a day. And during those two hours, they are not just running trains. Only one of those hours is spent running trains. The other hour a day is spent doing other things, such as maybe putting kits together, doing a bit of soldering, doing some 3D printing, assembling layouts, that sort of thing. So with that in mind, I've broken it down. So trains for one hour a day, that will equal seven pence. Now, obviously, when you're using your layout, you will also be using your accessories, the LEDs I mentioned that is 0.7 pence. Also, when running trains, you have your layout lights switched on, so that adds 23.1 pence a week. I'm going to imagine that our modeler spends around two hours soldering in this week. Maybe they put a kit together or something. That would cost around 2.4 pence. I'm going to assume that the house lights are gonna be on all of the time. So yes, when you're running the trains and also when you're doing other things. So that's a massive cost of 99.7 pence within the week. That's 14 hours of lights, by far the biggest chunk of the cost. I'm also going to say that around half an hour of rotary tool use was undertaken. That's 1.5 pence. That's not really that bad, is it, to be honest? The glue gun was used for two hours, which is 1.8 pence. And finally, our modeler did a little bit of 3D printing. Maybe they printed off a wagon or something that they were going to paint. That takes around four hours, and four hours for this week would be 18.8 .8 pence. 
Right, let's total all of that up and find out what it cost our modeler for one week of their hobby. Well, the total cost was £1.55. Now, yes, we made a lot of assumptions here, and yes, we used the new really high electricity price, which maybe most of us won't be paying. So I don't think that sounds too bad. I mean, it's not in the pence region anymore like it used to be, but £1.55, I think that's affordable, isn't it? But the crazy statistic is that around two thirds of that is just house lights, right? And that modeler's gonna be using those whether they are modeling or not, presumably. So we're only talking 50 something pence for the actual modeling activities which have been going on. So really, I don't think that's too bad at all. But what I wanna do now is compare that price to what it would cost you if perhaps you did a few other things around the house. For instance, watching TV. So if you watch television for those 14 hours in the week, at 64 watts, that would cost you 3.3 pence per hour, and that would be 46 pence for the week. And that's if you're sitting in the dark. If you've got the lights on, you can add that 99p or whatever it was, which brings us to about the same as the railway modeling. Let's imagine then that you spend that time using a computer instead. Now, again, this is not gonna be a definitive answer because depending on what you do on your computer and depending on what sort of PC you've got, the, the price is gonna be vastly different. But for this test, I did just a little bit of web browsing and the computer and its monitor consumed 98 watts, which comes out at 5.1 pence per hour and for the 14 hours in that week, that would cost 71.4 pence. Again, that's in the dark. If you add the lights, then again, browsing the internet for 14 hours is more expensive than railway modeling. So I think that's pretty good news, isn't it? As long as you're careful, and as long as you use LED lighting, and as long as you don't leave devices switched on unnecessarily, Railway modelling does not really cost that much. We're talking approximately one to two pounds a week. That will obviously vary depending on your tools and devices, but I think that's quite a good ballpark. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was useful to you. I will include some affiliate links in the description to this, the electricity usage monitor. So if you want to get one and find out exactly what your devices are costing you, then you absolutely can do. Also, if I've missed out a device that you, as a modeler, use quite a lot, do comment down below and let me know, and I might consider doing a part two with this thing and uh, find out what other devices cost. And finally, a massive thank you to Richard for sending me this video idea. I think it was a good idea and I hope it will be useful to people. So, even if you end up paying 52 pence per kilowatt hour, it's not the end of the world. This hobby is only gonna cost you a pound or two every week at most, really. So that's pretty good news, isn't it? So hopefully that makes you feel better. I will see you soon for some more videos. You take care now. Cheers, everybody.